Today we are going to make the future of customer support. Fully functional AI agent and delivery service which can answer clients' questions, which can help you track your packages, create support tickets and even set up calls with support team. Before jumping in, please don't forget to subscribe. To go through this tutorial, you will need few accounts set up. First of all, it's NNN where we build an automation. Then it's super based to for a vector store. It's Airtable which we use as a usual database. And finally, a Google account with both Google Drive and calendar setup. Once you're done, we can get started. So in the first place, we've got the trigger. What you need to know about that is it's set to interact with our AI agent. And thanks to that, we can see chat popping out over here. You don't really need to change anything over here in this tutorial, so we can skip it and go to agent. AI agent module is the core of the automation. It's a module where in system message we specify what our module is going to do and how it's going to behave. So over here in system message, I at high level specify the purposes. Briefly, I'm saying that it's going to answer users' questions and it's going to process user requests. And in case of troubles, uh, we are going to set up calls or create support tickets. To make it workable, we need a few more things set up over here. And this is first chat model. Here you specify the model you would like to work with and for sure you need to create credentials. To set up your credentials, you need to go here and uh, just set up your OpenAI API key. Next, we are getting to chat memory. Chat memory is used to for a model to remember what's going on in terms of communication with specific user. And over here I used Postgres chat memory. To set it up, you will need to set credentials. To get this stuff, you will need to go to your super base project. You will need to go to connect. And over here below at transaction pooler, you're gonna need this. So you're gonna copy this. You're going to extract whatever from here and it's going to be your host. So to get all of this, you're gonna go to your super base. Here you go to connect. And over here at transaction pooler, you can your parameters and basically here's everything you need there's a host database user and port password at the same time is something which is created at the time of project creation so don't forget to write it down somewhere after setting memory we finally get to revising tools and the first tool is for retrieval documents here in the tool itself i explained to ai that it, uh, the tool should be used uh, whenever our client has got some questions about our services and then there is a vector store in vector store you're going to set up your connection to do so you're going to set host which i already showed you how to find and the second Parameter is service role secret, uh, which you can find if you go to settings API and over here, here it is. You're going to reveal it and copy. Coolest thing about Superbase, it's easy to set up. There is clear documentation. So to set it up, you're going to go to docs. Here you're going to find quick start. And to set vector store, you're going to copy this piece. And moving back to Superbase, you're going to go to SQL editor and just run it over here. What this will do for you is it will create for you vector store for documents, first of all, and second, it will create function match documents, which uh, will be used to find similarities based on user provided input. Coming back to NNN over here, once you set up the query, you will see that there's here a table called documents available. And here uh, in the query name, we've got match documents, which I explained what it's for. A few more steps at this stage, we're going to set up, uh, first of all, embeddings. This is to divide our text in chunks and uh, chat model. To communicate with uh, documents in Vector Store, we should make it possible to somehow upload it to Vector Store. And for this purpose, we've got uh, this flow below. Basically what it does is whenever I put some file in a specific Google Drive folder, it extracts this file and just puts places it in my vector store. So here the first uh, trigger is file created or file updated. In both of the triggers, I'm setting up the folder where that is tracked for updates. Then in the next step, I'm going to set up file ID. Then over here, I'm deleting old rows in case it's, uh, we are talking about updated document, not cre just created one. And the next is uh, we're downloading the file. Here we just provide uh, file ID, which we set up in uh, set file ID module. Then we're extracting document text. And finally, 
Uh, there is a Superbase module to insert documents to just create a table in Superbase. I already have some data uploaded to Vector Store. Here in Google Drive, I uploaded uh, files uh, with problems described. Those are just a few examples of troubles can be faced by clients at a delivery service. Now for testing purposes, we can take one of the questions. Let's take that. If we go back to our AI agent and we ask the question, we can see that it's using uh, this branch for document retrieval. So this is uh, our initial purpose and the answer completely matches whatever we've got in our knowledge base. Now let's take a look at the rest of tools and let's start with uh, this search order tool. This one is used for a few cases. The first and most important is to track uh, our package. Let's say if a client wants to find out about uh, the location of his package or like delivery date and stuff like this, he can provide his package number and he can get uh, the results. The rest of cases are used for creating tickets and scheduling calls. And this is, uh, this is done to make sure uh, the client is not like somebody fake. So it's an existent client with real order, not the first person who just decided to write the boat. If we open the module, we can see that over here, I set up description cases when the tool should be used. Below I'm specifying operation search. I'm specifying database I'm working with and the table. In the context of this example, we are looking at this table. Here, as you can see, I've got orders with tracking number. Each has got status, location, estimated delivery time, and customer mail. Coming back to NNN, here uh, I've got formula. It is formula to return specific uh, order with specific tracking number. Here is a prefix from AI. It means it means the parameter is passed by our LLM. And what else? Here I'm specifying the specific uh, fields I would like to see as output. Now, if we check it out and ask uh, about specific package, we will get the results. So let's take, for instance, this. So I'm going to send a message like this. I can see that the tool was used. The agent told me First, the status, which is correct, its location, which is absolutely correct, and estimated delivery time, which is correct as well. The next tool is for creation of ticket. We are going to use it whenever our clients face some troubles, but at the same time, they couldn't solve it just uh, asking something in this chat. If you jump inside, here, as always, I specify a description whenever a client uh, needs help of support team. And also important note, I'm saying that it should be used in combination with search order tool. As I was saying, it is to make sure that the client really exists and we've got his order in place. Now let's take a look at example. I'm going to send a message like this where I'm saying, I want to create support ticket, like my order is blah, blah, blah. And the reason why I'm applying uh, my package is uh, completely destructed, like it's in a terrible state. Let's, let's check it out. When checking logs and uh, messages, I can see that the support ticket was successfully created. That indeed, first uh, there was search order tool used as I specified, and when it made sure it uh, really exists, it created ticket. If I go to Airtable, to support tickets, I can see that it indeed created over here and all the fields are filled in. And finally, the last tool which I'm going to show you today is for scheduling calls. So the trouble is so urgent that uh, the client would like uh, to set up some follow-up call. So in this context, there are a few tools. First is getting slots, and this one is used to, to get free slots based on uh, my Google Calendar events for a specified day. And the second one is schedule call to create a Google Calendar event itself. Let's start with getting slots. Here, as always, in description, I specify when it should be used. And I'm saying that it's used to get free slots. And few important notes that first, we are using search order tool first to make sure the client indeed exists. And second, the client should provide me with a desired date. If you go to the flow itself, it's over here below. And what's going on here, once we get the desired date, we're going to manipulate it. If the date passed is the same uh, date as today, so we're going to add an hour for preparation. Let's say if now is uh, the 12th of January, 1 p.m., it means the output of this will be 2.13. Okay, 
How does it work? In the first place, we get a date, and after that, we are going to manipulate this date in this module. Here I have a few parameters to set up. It's start of day and end of day. Both are limiting parameters which I use to find out uh, free slots in my Google Calendar for a specific day. Let's now keep focused uh, around this. To simplify this brain exploding formula, if the date provided by user is today and the output of this will be current date and time plus one hour so let's say if today is uh, the 12th of january uh, 1315 it means the output will be 1415 at the same time if uh, the date is not today let's say it's tomorrow here we'll see the date for tomorrow and the start will be midnight if we are going to check uh, this parameter it's more simple it's just uh, the date provided plus one day and that's it next we're going to get uh, free calendar events here i'm specifying after a parameter and before with whatever we set up in the previous step finally in the next step i'm using piece of code which uh, finds free slots based on whatever is occupied and i understand it's really brain exploding so we're going to take a look at a few practical examples it will make things clear and we see that for today this window available from 2 30 to 8 pm now if i come back to nnn if i open chat if I send a message like this, in the first place, it's for sure asking me for my tracking number to make sure uh, I'm an existing client and then for preferred date for the call. I'm going to specify my order over here and the date will be below. As I was showing in my Google Calendar, I had uh, the spots available from 2.30 to 8 p.m. And it's completely, completely correct. Also, it's asking about my email address. Uh, this email address will be used uh, for creation event on Google Calendar. Uh, the address, by the way, is taken from a database. Uh, as you can see over here, I provided my tracking number. So it was used uh, to find an order. Here I've got, this is the email. I'm saying that I would like for free 30 and also I'm specifying my mail is changed to this just for demonstrate its work. Now I'm going to send a message as an output. I can see that the call with support team has been scheduled for free 30. I'm going to check it in Google Calendar. Yes, I can see that it's completely correct. In the guest uh, email, there is an email provided. So everything is all set. I've been thinking for a long time how else I can complicate it, what else features I can add. At this point, I will be really happy to find out your thoughts about this. Please let me know in comments your thoughts. As always, uh, the full template for all of that stuff you can find in our community. The link will be specified in the description. And that's it for today. Thank you and see you again.